Well, since this gentleman sit down beside me, I am so happy that they give me this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why in a second. So it says, from being different to making a difference. Kevin Powell is the academic head in the Department of General Studies and Behavioral Science at UCC and has an inspiring story to share. Morning, my friend. Morning. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Smile Jamaica. It, UCC is now the Commonwealth? The University of the Commonwealth Caribbean. All right. Yes. So I said to him, um, <laughs> If sometimes people don't kind of look at him kind of strange and him feel away. So him say, no, me laugh after people more than, <laughs> more than them laugh after me. <laughs> the second thing I said to him is Moses' condition, if him don't feel away. Him said, no, the amount of perks him gets being disabled. <laughs> him no want to walk again. <laughs> Morning. Morning, Neville. Tell Morning. me what happened to you, when it happened, and, and why it happened, if you know all those answers. All right. I... I was diagnosed with a condition called arthrogryposis, big name level, but I try to spell it, it's it really long. <laughs> um, it's a condition though that affects the joints of my legs. So when I was born actually, my parents told me that my legs were folded like this. And it was a condition that resulted in the fact that my mother's womb, they said, the doctor at the time said, was, didn't have enough space. And so... Um, there weren't enough room inside her womb to be uh, so legs were stuck together. To, yes, right. to be developed. And so they came folded like this in this position. So immediately had to be rushed off for surgery by the then great doctor, Professor John Golden, who did all he could to get them looking like this, get them straightened. So yeah. When did was, you realize that you were a little bit different than everybody else or most people? I suppose I realized I was different when I can remember just seeing myself in casts a lot. I was in wearing casts, you know, these, you know, white things on my legs quite frequently. And then also I had to wear corrective shoes. So I had these metal looking things on my legs and, you know, kind of to help them to be aligned in a straighter manner. And so, yeah, I, I, I figured that. But, um, I was never, ne never made to feel different by my parents, certainly. Um, but yes, and I was also a part of the Mona Rehabilitation Center. And so I saw people who looked like me, who um, you know, were, had various conditions. So certainly I, I was never made to feel different yep. in, in that regard. When you knew, um, and, and obviously speaking to your parents, and they're still around, yes. um, did they feel why is them cause it and... Well, you know, I'll tell you something. My mom tells a funny story. She says, every time, when I was born, my father, he came in the room and when he saw my condition, he, he cried, Neville, he cried like a baby. He had to be consoled by the nurse. Um, so I suppose, like, you know, any new parent, you, you know, you're, you're looking for this healthy baby boy and instead you see a, a child who looks different in that regard. So I suppose they felt, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, what I, I, I remember my mom asking and praying sometimes, you know, Lord, what do you, you know? But for me, though, I think they, they, that didn't linger too long. Did they, you ever go there? Did you ever I went why? there. I, I've, I've why been, me? I've been to the, at, at the why me stages in my life quite frequently. I especially the teenage years, you know, when I see my friends running up and down or playing football. I went to the, the champion of champions, Calabar High School. Well, that is so, agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is that but, right? <laughs> but yes. And, and so when I saw, the, you know, my other friends, you know, doing things that, that I think a, a boy at my age should be doing, I sometimes felt that I wish I could walk. But, you know, at Calabar, I... I I was never made to feel different again. I, I was always in these institutions where I was never made to feel different. So at Calabar, I, was, I integrated myself. I used to play badminton at Calabar in my wheelchair. Yeah, man. I had wheelchair and would be going to, into the chapel and do my thing. And, and of course, I, 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 I suppose, again, another perks, Neville, when I was at Calabar in the PE department, you know, it was a rough department. So at PE time, come and all the other boys had to you know, you never I, never asked, I, never, I never felt anyway. I mean, like, oh, yeah, go. <laughs> 20 more times. I'm like, yes, coach, 20 more times on the field for them. <laughs> so, yes, you know, I, I, those feelings for me didn't, didn't linger too And long. even now, you have never e gone oh, back Oh, gosh, there. no, no. You drive. I drive. But you drive a little differently than mm, I do. No, I don't. Well, well use oh, it. yes. Because I use my right leg. Right, I, I use my left leg. Yeah, but I don't have your two. 
<laughs> wow, yes. in incredible. Um, you're all right. Yeah, man. You don't need any more treatment or, or... Well, the last surgery I did was at the age of 11, I think. And that's it? And that's it. That's it. Um, it was supposed to straighten my, my hips. And that was it. And you don't use the wheelchair anymore? I don't use the wheelchair anymore. In fact, well, it was after that surgery that I started to use the wheelchair because it was a kind of a retraining for me. But then when I entered sixth form at Calabar, I decided, okay, no more of the wheelchair. Yeah. How difficult is it for you to get around, if it's difficult at all? It, it is. I have to plan my routes. I have to make sure that wherever I'm going, there are sufficient seating arrangements for me to do you know, rest stops. I had to do that when I was at UA. So all my life, I have to be making sure that I plan my routes. When you say a rest stop, how long can so, you move around before <clears throat> you have to sit? Uh, boy, sometimes it, it, it depends. So for me, it's easier to go in a straight line. So walking from here, this, the, this, this distance in a straight line, it's you know, not so bad. But if I have to go around and different, you know, at different locations, I have to make sure that I have adequate stops to just yep. catch my breath. Because sometimes the pain is in my back. When Even I now? Walk, so you're on medication? Distances. No, I don't. I'm not on medication. I'm not on medication. I don't just think I need to lose the weight, never. <laughs> I just need to lose the weight. So why don't you use a wheelchair? Because it sounds like it will be easier for you. Well, to be honest, well, certainly... I've given it some thoughts, but when I look at the, the impediments to using wheelchair sometimes you in Jamaica, need ramps and, yeah, ramps ramps and access, it's, it's, yep. I said, boy, I'm a, a young man, who, when I'm ready to move, I want to move. So. Yep. Um, <coughs> Kevin, it, it, is, it is a fantastic story, but um, like everybody else, you don't get a little down because you seem so perky and you don't get a little down sometimes I, when I, you don't I, go there at all? I try not to go there. I try not to go there. As I said to you... Where you get the strength from? Christ. I'm a Christian. I've been saved for forever since I know myself. So yes, I do get down. I'm not going to say that I don't get down, but I, I don't dwell on it because when I look at my life and see all I have been able to accomplish in such a short space of time, I said, yeah, man, this, look, this feels good. Yep. You know, I, and for me, it's, it's a mental kind of thing where if you are, if you're mentally strong, then whatever your obstacle, whatever your yep. impediment, physical, it, it matters not. Yep. You're you also know. married. I am married to um, a beautiful woman. And, and, <laughs> and how, how did you feel getting into that kind of thing? Did you think, why, for God, she went and said, no, I can't why? manage, and that's your family right there. Yes. And she's yes. here, by the way, she's in studio with us. But how did you feel when you decided, boy, I wonder if I can manage? And, you know? Well, yes, I, I, had those, I had those doubts. Um, you know, that was the point where I, th I, th I started to think to boy, I know I was always a girl's man, I'm charming. <laughs> I, I'm gifted with words. You know, I, I, you know lyrics in all wasn't the issue. <laughs> but again, <laughs> the social pressures, you know, what it is that others would say. I'm, I, I was sometimes often concerned about what people would say about me, to be frank. And I sometimes was more concerned for her, you know. That's, that's that's the missus right there. Yes, that's, that's, that's Marsha. Uh, obviously <laughs> Say hi, Marsha. <laughs> obviously a fantastic woman. Um, obviously a fantastic woman. But, yes. but again, me, me, me love them because story I know, so tell me how you did with it. Yeah, I, man. So you see, when, you, when you reach that part, everybody stays. Yeah. The, whole, the whole of them want to learn. You know, so. you know to be, to, to be, let me share something with you. In fact, when, on the day of our wedding, uh, I was told, and I actually saw persons who were never invited, who came to the church just to peek. To say, oh, you're to say, oh, better marsh down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So I kind of was more concerned for her, because, yeah. you know, but she, she, we loved each other, and, and we, we committed ourselves to each other to say, listen, you know, the, the moment I knew I was going to marry this young lady, um, Neville, was one day I was driving, and the car broke down, and you know, I started to panic because I can't fix car. I can't lift bonnet on you. <laughs> you know, and here I, here I was with this young lady. I'm supposed to now be protecting her and taking care of her. And it was, I think, very late at in the night. And she was the one who lifted the bonnet. Don't know a thing about car, you know, but was there trying to sort things out. And she was there trying to get assistance for me. And she wasn't afraid. She wasn't, you know, complaining. And I said, wow. This is a woman I want to spend the rest of my life with because she will stick it out with me through thick or thin. Book up, book up, book up. <laughs>
Virgin, I, I say you usually when I get them interview, I cry. I feel I going to cry, but this is, <laughs> I, I, this is going to be a happy cry because I really, I really don't feel sad. This is Beautiful. such a fantastic story. It is brilliant to meet you. You have made my entire life. You have made my entire life. Thank my you, brother. Doctor. Respect. Bless up. So, my name, Maria, I forgot to let her have some lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> None of them, no, no, girl. None of them, no, no. So, you have to let her have some lyrics. Great we, to have, meet we, you. Have, we have a gelding crew at Color at, in my year, <laughs> my year group, but I'm supposed to be counseling. You know, they don't have any children yet, and I want to make sure that, you know, I give them the remedy. <laughs> Hi, academic head in the <laughs> Department of General Studies and Behavioral Science at UCC, Mr. Kevin Powell. And great to meet Mrs. Powell also. More and smile. You know, see me again. Me go and ball somewhere quietly. <laughs> this is fun. Great to meet you. Thank Fantastic you. to meet you. Soon come.